Hello. Yes, it is not correct to start a treatment the moment you are diagnosed that you are a diabetic. You may think, what is there in it? There are certain things that a doctor should understand. There are certain things the patients should understand. And before starting a treatment, we should have a complete picture about this particular person because one thing it is going to be a lifelong problem let us see how and why I say this you may ask why after all we have the evidence and we have all the results in hand and we have verified the results why not we treat treatment this is a reasonable question there are two things uh, we have to consider first. One, how long the person was diabetic, we don't know. Because only today we come to know accidentally that his sugars, how long is one point, how much sugar was there is another point. Because this will determine his treatment and nobody knows how much the sugar has affected his organs. I am Dr. Bala Subramanian. The usual doubt is many people will ask us, Doctor, my neighbor has diabetes for the past 10 years and uh, he doesn't have any complications. This is one thing. That particular person who may be having a mildly elevated sugar and uh, he would not have experienced the complications of this uh, mild elevation, not a severe diabetic patient. So the complications will arise not based on this duration of his disease. It comes second. Your severity of the problem comes first. Or a short duration of diabetic, he may go for complete. Now, we don't know how long this person has been a diabetic and how much diabetic, we don't know. Now, at least we can know to what extent the organs have suffered because of this blood supply. Without knowing that, just imagine you start a treatment things the person may think that he is completely cured and no complication is there and that gives a false impression so before starting a treatment we should test either a blood test or some procedures to know how much the organs are affected by this less blood supply and some diseases coexist for that also we should do some tests and sometimes you may have to modify the treatment or modify the dosage depending upon the organs which are affected. For example, if the liver is affected, most of the substances including glucose and most of the medicines you are going to take are metabolized in liver. So you should know whether the liver is functioning or not. And when you give a tablet, most of the waste products and even the extra medicine which you have taken have to be excreted through the kidney. So if the kidney is not functioning well, you may have to adjust the dosage. For one person, the kidney is normal, you may give 1000 milligram. For this person, you may, get, you may give only 500 milligram because the drug is not excreted properly. So the drug may circulate in the blood for a longer time. So you may reduce the dosage. Now tell me, is it not mandatory before starting a treatment? And another important thing is, when a patient comes to your doctor, the doctor should know what are the organs affected and the patient should also know that his organs are affected to this much extent. Otherwise, one fine morning, the patient may blame the doctor that when I came here, I was all right. Only after this treatment and all my kidney is spoiled, my liver is spoiled like that. It's not to escape, but for a transparent thing. Because some of the complications, if it is very early, can be reversed. Some of the complications, you can stop the progression of the problem. Some, you cannot do anything sometimes, you know. You should explain to the patient that you are in this situation, your blood test is like this. So have this as a reference. Apart from that, all these tests will be stored for future reference. After three months or six months or one year, you can take this test and compare the present test. In this one year, what is cured? what is controlled and what problem has increased and all. So for comparison also, you need this type of test before starting a treatment. Okay, shall we look into that?
the very first thing is you are taking fasting sugar postprandial sugar and hbnc the fasting and postprandial may vary it may not be the same every day because depending upon the uh, the food you have taken the previous night the dinner postprandial also after food depends upon the type of food type of activity you do so what i suggest is repeat it repeat at least fasting and postprandial once again before starting a treatment to know that it is most of the time it is elevated above normal so to confirm your diagnosis repeat h immediately people think that okay fine i have an increased blood sugar it is because i don't have enough insulin it's not like that it is not a must that your insulin level should be less for some people the insulin may be less for some people it may be absent and for some people sugar is also elevated even their insulin level also would have been elevated so now the very first thing would you would like to know what is my status as far as insulin is concerned do i have enough insulin or i have more insulin or i don't have insulin only on this basis a treatment can be started know your insulin level do i have a test to know how much insulin i have yes you do have that is c peptide what is called the connecting peptide this does not directly measure the level of insulin but whenever one molecule of insulin is released this c peptide is also released by measuring this c peptide you can indirectly measure how much of insulin have been released now by doing this test you can decide with what type of treatment you can give so c peptide test is a very important test and i have given a separate video on this coexisting diseases very important is thyroid around 20% of the diabetics have thyroid problem also there are many reasons for this thyroid is also a metabolic hormone thyroxine is very important for overall metabolism pancreas is very important for glucose metabolism when i say metabolism glucose is the immediate source of energy and that energy should be utilized by the body for that thyroid function is also important so thyroid test is very important because both have metabolic functions next liver function test a very important organ which is directly concerned with metabolism and uh, especially glucose as you know well the extra sugar is going to be stored in the liver as glycogen for this storage insulin helps if the insulin level is less you know more sugar will be circulating and because of this extra sugar circulating the liver may get problem in the form of fatty liver because the extra sugar is converted into fat and it gets deposited in the liver so you may go for a fatty liver so to know the function of the liver and to know the appearance of the liver you have to do some liver function test insulin glucose liver all these are very much interconnected and as you know well one of the complication of uncontrolled diabetes is fatty liver so you have to do a liver function test and many of the drugs will go to the liver only so naturally if the liver is not functioning well the drugs may not be metabolized next is everybody is afraid of a failure is it the failure of the doctor or a failure of the patient or failure of both the result is an organ failure especially the kidney failure we are all worried about kidney failure but remember one thing you have two kidneys even if you donate one you survive and there are lakhs and lakhs of units the functional units nephrons there in the kidney it's not a sudden failure of kidney it's a long drawn affair and controlled diabetics for a longer period can only precipitate a failure it's not an like an attack and remember one thing if there is a failure of the kidney you cannot rectify it even if you have a problem in the foot you remove the foot and you live but as far as kidney is concerned you cannot remove it you have to replace it you look for a donor so kidney function is very very important and what are all the kidney functions you can do you can do a blood urea 
creatinine. All these are metabolic ways. The function of the kidney, as you know well, it should not let out the substance which is required by the body. At the same time, it should not keep in which is not required by the body. So keeping in waste, a failure, sending out necessary substances like protein from the body into the urine, that is also a failure. So you can assess when most of the kidney units are failed, you may get an increase in urea and creatinine. A very important test you have to do. Next thing is estimated glomerular filtration rate, EGFR. This is a calculated one, that is how much of urine is formed in one minute. After all, the function of your kidney is formation of urine. So, if it is not able to form urine to the expected level in one minute, then that is also an indication for a failing kidney. A very important and uh, easy method is what is called a 24 hours urinary microalbuminuria. Micro means very small quantity, not size here. I have given another video regarding this very, very important. Even if you do yearly ones, this will help you to know or to diagnose very early functional defect in a kidney, which many times is reversible. And uh, you'll be very careful that my management of diabetes is not sufficient. This will give a clue, 24 hours urinary microalbuminuria. So this kidney function test, urea, creatinine, EGFR and urinary microalbuminuria are very important tests to be done before starting a treatment uh, to know your renal health. The next test, lipid profile. So when I say profile, you know, it gives a clear picture about the various fractions of what do you call it, the cholesterol, fat, etc. Lipid profile. In this, you examine the total cholesterol, what is called your LDL, HDL, VLDL, triglyceride, all this you measure. Why? Because when you have diabetes, the extra sugar which is circulating, well, they are converted into fat molecules. And there is one reason you get a fatty liver. And this, and when this cholesterol circulate, as I told you, they get deposited in the blood vessel and they may obstruct the blood vessel. Increased sugar level causes increased cholesterol. This cholesterol deposition into the blood vessel, narrowing of blood vessel, that causes increased blood pressure. And all this will cause a macrovascular complication like heart attack or a stroke. So these are all interlinked. You must know, you have to reduce the cholesterol level by giving some medicines and lifestyle modification, treat diabetes and treat the effect of diabetes like hypercholesterolemia, etc. So you have to do a lipid profile test also before starting a treatment. So these are the preliminary tests you have to do. These are all biochemical blood tests assessing the functional capacity of each organ. Diabetics may affect all these organs. So when you don't know how long he was a diabetic and how much he was diabetic, is it not pertinent to know what are the organs affected, what is the percentage of organ affected and what is the percentage of function loss by these organs. Then you can approach him in a different way, treating the cause that is reducing the blood sugar and treating the effect that is the complications, you have to assess all those things. This will be a very transparent approach on both patient's side as well as the doctor's side. Now, the patient understand in what situation he is and what is his present problems, how to address it, etc. When you explain all those things and when you show these results to the person and ask him, so these are all the things you have. So I'm, done, I'm starting the treatment. I can reduce your sugar level. I can treat your diabetic simply. Within a month or two, it can be controlled. But the complications of diabetes, it is very difficult to go back to normalcy. The patient will accept and understand that. And we are also safe because certain things we can cure, certain things we can control, certain things we cannot do anything. 
all these should be transparent to the patient we discuss about this so these are all are some of the biochemical tests other procedures that is what all we talk is the functions of the organ but next you have to do some procedures assessing the heart and assessing the liver size the shape and all and his blood vessels how much they are narrowed all these tests to be done which we will see in the next video thank you till then bye